Ah, the age-old question. Does size truly matter? Well, I don't want to dive into that controversial area, but we can all agree that when it comes to electric vehicles, bigger ranges are undeniably superior. Yes, we're talking about range, not what you had in mind. And while we think bigger range EVs are better, here comes Ford CEO Jim Farley telling us it's not. Do you think maybe he's compensating for something? Apparently not. According to him, it could be a win for the driver, but a loss for the company. And in this video, we're taking you through his bold statement and giving you two sides of the story. A driver like you who craves for long ranges and a company who will take a loss for your cravings. There's some maximum range that Ford's upcoming car is peaking, but we'll unveil that juicy detail at the end of the video. I think we can all agree that range is the holy grail of electric vehicles, especially in the good old United States. The majority of us don't go on epic cross-country expeditions every day. In fact, most of our drives are short and sweet, with our trusty homes never too far away. So, theoretically, an EV with just 100 miles of range could handle the daily grind like a champ. But once in a blue moon, we yearn for the open road. Those exhilarating road trips that make life worth living. And that's when the plot thickens. For that, we will definitely go for a 200 mile cause. Then, it would be good for short and long travels. But at highway speeds, that 200 mile range sinks faster than cotton candy in a rainstorm. Heck, if you're lucky enough to go find yourself on those wild western roads where you can legally push 80 miles an hour, going 85 or even 90 won't get you pulled over, but it'll eat your range up. And that's not the only problem here. With a range that drains fast, there's also a lack of charging stations. They're sprinkled across the land like confetti, but the amount of EV cars on the road is increasing. And let's not forget about those electric trucks flexing their muscles, towing heavy loads that can suck the life out of their range faster than a thirsty vampire. Oh, and did I mention the unforgiving terrain? Because those rural areas with a lack of charging infrastructure often come with steep hills, turning a leisurely drive into an uphill battle. So as EV drivers, it would make sense to get an EV with a whopping 400 miles of range, right? You wouldn't have to worry about charging or even going a little over the speed limit, which again, you shouldn't. Even if you're traveling to a palace of no charging stations and treacherous mountain roads, a 400 mile range seems acceptable. So if we want to see electric vehicles gracefully parked in every driveway, we need range and lots of it. Because deep down in the deepest recesses of our minds, we're all road warriors yearning for the freedom to roam far and wide. This is our innocent little request, which automakers like Zeker have fulfilled with the GAC Aeon LX Plus, a compact SUV that went on sale in January in China and has a range of 625 miles. But to Ford, 600 miles is a lot to ask. Ford CEO Jim Farley questions the profitability of such an EV and recently voiced his doubts at Ford's Capital Markets Day reigning his skepticism on the bigger is better approach to the range. According to the good old folks at Green Car Reports, Ford CEO said that, I have no idea what's going on in this industry right now. All I hear is all these announcements of a 450 mile range, a 500 mile range. There was another one today about a three row crossover. It's gonna go electric. These batteries are huge. If you have that kind of battery, you will not make money. With this, he also silenced the fate of Ford EVs by stating that we're not going to go to 600 mile range. We're trying to make the smallest possible battery for competitive range. Ford CEO is now battling range versus profitability. And to truly get a perspective of his dilemma, we have to look at this from their perspective. The first thing we need to consider is the efficiency of the car. To get a greater range, they have to pile on more battery cells, which will increase the weight. With extra weight, you'll see all that extra range is just utilized in a pushing the heavy car. Each additional kilowatt hour of energy storage brings less range than the last. It's like chasing a wild goose and ending up in absurd places, like the GMC Hummer EV, a behemoth weighing a whopping 9,000 pounds but falling short of a stellar range. When you dedicate an immense amount of battery power, we're talking hundreds of kilowatt hours, to a single vehicle, it becomes even more difficult to boost EV production. Think about it. If batteries double in size, you can only churn out half the number of EVs. And if they're four times the size of a regular EV, well, you've lost a staggering 75% of your production ability, setting the company back not just years, but possibly decades. Ouch! 
Ford's CEO knows a thing or two about this balancing act. He understands the economics of lithium-ion EV batteries and the impact they have on the vehicles that use them. They're costly to begin with, and adding more cells to boost range brings negative returns. Plus, let's not forget the pesky costs that come with compensating for the added weight. It's a tricky cycle where range comes at a great cost, potentially making the longest range EVs ineligible for those enticing tax credits. And that, my friends, shrinks the market for EVs dealing a blow to their business case. That's why Ford isn't aligning with the bigger is better philosophy, much like Tesla. They're focusing on building efficient vehicles that can do more with less. This approach keeps costs low, profits high, and allows them to rev up EV production. No boutique numbers here, folks. Ford aims to grab a substantial slice of the future EV market. Of course, things could change if solid-state batteries come into play. But let's be real, the industry agrees that we won't see them in action for a very long time. So for now, Ford is dancing to the tune of efficiency and practicality, leading the charge in their own unique way. When it comes to trucks, which can definitely benefit from the range, they will be the first to eat up the range because of the weight. Imagine you're towing a towering fifth wheel trailer, weighing a hefty 10,000 pounds. Suddenly, that 600 mile range starts sounding absurd as you're left with a mere 200 miles of juice, if you're lucky. In fairness, not many folks are towing mammoth trailers like that on a daily basis. So Ford shouldn't reshape its entire truck strategy around this niche. There are ways to cater to these adventurous souls during the electrification transition. One idea that's been floating around, and trust me, I've crunched the numbers like a math magician, is the possibility of plug-in hybrid electric trucks. Hear me out. For those who commute during the week on electric power but need the extra oomph for hauling boats to the lake or taking a camper up their majestic mountains on summer weekends, a plug-in hybrid could be the perfect match. The difference in environmental impact is minimal, and it's a win-win situation. Also, work trucks that mostly do local runs but occasionally need that mighty range for highway tows can also benefit from the hybrid magic. It's like having the best of both worlds, my friends. Now, I must admit, this solution doesn't cover those hotshot truck drivers who constantly haul time-sensitive loads over long distances with their trusty one-ton or medium-duty vehicles. But their numbers are few and far between, so we can put that electrification worry on the back burner for now. And who knows? Things may change in the future with better batteries and a steady supply. But for now, my friends, we must face the reality before us. Let's keep our eyes on the road ahead and see where this electrifying journey takes us. While Ford is going on about range, they've had a secret up their sleeve all along. You see, the CEO himself was fed up with relying on a messy and dysfunctional CCS charging network. Oh yeah. Ford was ready to break free from that chaos and pave its own electrified path. The official announcement came a few days later, but the wheels were already in motion. Turns out, Ford's taking a page out of Tesla's books and focusing on efficiency. And what does that mean? Well, it means their vehicles will rely more on charging infrastructure rather than gigantic battery packs. That makes sense, right? But here's the catch. When the infrastructure falls short, it leaves customers hanging and disappointed. And trust me, nobody wants to buy 90% of a car. That's a major roadblock that Tesla knew to avoid from the start, and now Ford is playing by the same rules. And don't worry, they're still set to build a three-row crossover vehicle with a whopping 300 miles of range. And here's the kicker, with a robust and reliable charging infrastructure in place, that 300 mile range is more than enough to meet the needs of just about everyone. So now we can say that the 300 to 350 mile range is a sweet spot. It doesn't make the car heavy and it's good enough for long travel. Of course, Ford isn't going to ignore the fact that public charging is a mess so they'll equally work on bringing more EV charging stations. Plus, we can't wait for the three-row crossover vehicle to hit the streets, for it's sure to be legend, wait for it, dairy. Thanks for watching.